Daily Bible Time. Good morning. It is Dominic Steele. It is Thursday morning, the 6th of June, 2024. Significantly 80 years today since the Allies landed in Normandy. And uh, yesterday on this little holiday trip that I'm having with my dad uh, and my uncle, uh, the two of us, the three of us visited um, Winston Churchill's family home. And uh, Winston Churchill, of course, in charge of the, well, in charge of Great Britain, Prime Minister of Great Britain at the time of the Allied landing on Normandy. Um, D-Day, 1944, and um, I got to read yesterday a letter from the King to Winston Churchill, imploring Churchill not to go out on the fleet of boats uh, for that day, but to stay in London and stay in charge and to stay at the helm of things, and uh, imploring him that, well, I would love to go, said the King, I'd love to be involved, I'd love, but actually the security risks for you and the security risks for me would really just distract the troops and we ought to stay out of the way. Anyway, chapter 28 of Isaiah today, and... Uh, Really, it's a new section, and um, it's a damning critique from Almighty God. First on the northern tribes, then the southern tribes, and then an evaluation of how God works. So first few verses, the northern tribes, woe to the majestic crown of Ephraim's drunkards, and to the fading, fading flower of its beautiful splendor, which is on the summit above the rich valley. Woe to those overcome with wine. Look, the Lord has a strong and a mighty one, like a devastating hailstorm like a storm with strong flooding water. He'll bring it across the land with his hand. The majestic crown of Ephraim's drunkards will be trampled underfoot. So, the Lord is looking north to the 10 northern tribes. Um, uh, Ephraim, of course, a big, significant tribe. And so sometimes you can blur from Ephraim to all the 10 northern tribes because Ephraim is so significant. Um, it's a judgment on Samaria. And you say, you guys are drunk when you should be thinking smart. This isn't the moment. Well, it's not the moment any time to get drunk, but this isn't the moment to get drunk. There's a moment of national crisis right now. You've got to be on the zone, in zone, thinking sharply, paying attention to what God wants, not just partying. And so a damning word from God on the northern tribes. And then just as the southern tribes listening to this are starting to feel complacent, Isaiah turns his guns on them, verse 14. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem. For you have said, we've made a covenant with death and we have an agreement with Sheol. When the overwhelming catastrophe passes through, it will not touch us because we've made falsehood our refuge. Oh, hang on. What's, he's saying, you guys, you guys in Jerusalem, you've come up with this covenant idea with death that you're going to escape death. That's false. <laughs> you're kidding yourself. You're lying. You're delusions. Um, therefore, the Lord God said, look, I made laid a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who believes will be unshakable. I'll make justice the measuring line and righteousness the mason's levels. Uh, hail will sweep away the false refuge and water will flood your hiding place. Your covenant with death will be dissolved. Your agreement with Sheol will not last. When the overwhelming catastrophe passes through, you will be trampled. So, yep, yeah, God will judge the South for their delusional behaviour as well. Then, interestingly, you jump down to verse 23 of chapter 28. Listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear what I say. Does the ploughman plough every day to plant seed? Does he continually break up and cultivate the soil? And he goes, no, no, no. The ploughman doesn't plough year round. He doesn't break up soil year round. The ploughman behaves, the farmer behaves at different times, different ways, different seasons. I mean, he's overwhelmingly for the good of the crop, but that leads him to do different things at different times. And so with God, God, to get the result that he wants from you, actually acts with you. Sometimes he speaks tenderly, sometimes he speaks sternly. And that's what Isaiah is saying here. His God teaches him order. He instructs him. Um, Bread grain is crushed, but it's not threshed endlessly. Black coming is beaten out with a stick, but not endlessly. Through the wheel of the farm, though the wheel of the farmer's cart rumbles, its horses do not crush it. This also comes from the Lord of Armies. He gives wondrous advice. He gives great wisdom. So, although it's been judgment, judgment today, that's not God's continual behaviour towards you. Now, let me lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chapter 28, this new section of Isaiah. Um, And we pray that as we um, hear the warnings in chapter 28, 29, 30, 
against um, trusting in alliances rather than trusting in you, that you might help us to heed that warning. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.